Hello, my name is Chase Guthrie. I'm an applications engineer with Haas Factory Outlet Chicago. Today we're going to be covering the Haas Mill Control, all the features and functionality available to you as a user. When you first approach your machine, you're going to need to turn it on to start with. If you notice on the front of the machine, it's got a power on and power off button. They're pretty self-explanatory. Power on is going to cycle the power, and then the machine is going to boot up the computer inside the control. Once the computer has booted up, the machine is ready for us to start manipulating it a little bit. So it has a startup checklist that it will come up on the front of the screen. Uh, step one is cycle the door, which you just manually open and close so that it makes sure the door switch functions correctly. You're going to re release the emergency stop if it's depressed. Uh, if, it, if it is depressed, it would be in the in motion. To release, you twist to the right. It has arrows on the front of the button. And then you'll press reset to clear the alarm. The next step is to press the power up button, which is this blue button right here on the control. And that will home all of the axes for you with one button. And then to clear this screen, you're going to press cancel to exit out of that menu. I mentioned the e-stop during startup procedure. Anytime your machine needs to be stopped in an emergency situation, do not hesitate to use the e-stop in the machine. This will stop all active motion in the machine immediately without delay. To release, simply twist to the right and press reset, and then you can jog the machine back to a safe location. The hand jog wheel is used to manually move the machine around. Cycle start and feed hold in the bottom left are used to start the program when we're ready to run. Feed hold is used to pause the program. It does not lose our current position or reset the program. Simply think of them as pause and start. In the upper left hand corner of the keypad we have reset, power up, and recover. Reset is used to clear any alarms or to reset the program back to the start. Power we talked about earlier homes all the axes and gets us ready when we're ready to start up the machine. Recover is used if we've had a tool change fault or maybe hit e-stop mid tool change. We can simply press recover, answer a few simple yes or no questions and the machine will recover itself and get it back ready to run. F1 through F4 are function keys just like on your computer. Their function is assigned based on the screen that we're on. As you can see here on the offset screen, F1 and F4 both have uses in this screen. So depending on what screen you're on, that will set their, per their use. Tool offset measure, next tool, tool release, and part zero set are used for manually setting tool offsets and work offsets. If your machine is equipped with a WIPS program, the probe system, you won't be using these programs. We'll be setting those tools and work offsets in a different manner. We have our axis selection here for when we want to manually jog the machine. We have X, Y, Z, and then on this particular machine we also have a B and a C. When we select hand jog, we can select our axes to jog around. So if I press hand jog, X axis, I can pick the increment here available. We have one tenth, one thou, ten thou, and one hundred thousand. If I select ten thou, X axis, each each pulse of the hand wheel will move in the x-axis ten thousandths of an inch. If I select one thou, then the increment is one thou per pulse, each one of the tick marks. If I hold the x-axis, it will feed at the increment of the lower number. We have one hundred thou, one inch, ten inches, and one hundred inches a minute. The jog lock button is the same as holding the button, but we don't actually have to hold it. So we can press jog lock, pick the axis of movement, and it will feed at the feed rate we have selected. Simply to press jog lock to turn off. Chip forward, chip stop, and chip reverse will turn our chip auger or chip conveyor on or off in either a forward or reverse motion. Simply press chip forward to start the chip auger or chip conveyor forward. Chip stop turns it off. When the conveyor is moving, the door will be locked. 
So if you ever have a situation where you can't figure out why the door won't open, verify that the ship auger isn't left on. Coolant up and coolant down on the right hand side of this section is used for a P cool. This is a programmable coolant nozzle. Some machines is, are equipped with that. And each pulse of the wheel, or excuse me, pulse of the button will move the coolant nozzle up or down one position. Aux coolant will turn on your through spindle coolant if your machine is equipped. The override buttons located in the lower left hand corner of the control panel are used to override programmed feed rates or spindle speeds. You can see there they have the 100%, then plus 10 or minus 10%, up or down. Simply press once for each 10% increment. 100% increment. just jumps right back to the program feed rate. The handle feed, when depressed, will allow us to increase the feed rate or spindle speed by 1% increment with the pulse wheel. Simply press 100% to jump back, and then you can turn off by pressing handle feed or handle speed again. Forward stop and reverse are used to start the, start the spindle and forward or reverse from the last programmed feed rate. Keep that in mind. The bottom row, 5, 25, 50, 100% are rapid overrides. 25% is recommended by Haas. For proving out a new program, you may find 5% to be a little more reasonable. One nice feature of the Haas control, it does feature a full alphanumeric keypad. This is featured across the entire bottom of the control panel. Any input is listed in the input line for you to press enter or use enter, insert, alter, or delete to insert into your program. Cancel is basically backspace. To get any of the yellow icons, simply press shift and then the corresponding button to get that symbol. The cursor in the center of the control is used to navigate around the menus. For example, when we're on the offset page, we can use the cursor to move around between the different highlighted text boxes. Home is used to go travel all the way to the top of the screen. End will take us to the very bottom available line. Page up and page down will do exactly that, move one page at a time. In the upper right hand portion of the control, we find our mode selections. We have edit. Memory, MDI, Handle Jog, Zero Return, and List Program. Edit is used to edit our G code program. We can use the cursor to navigate around and then use the functions Insert, Alter, Delete, Undo, as well as the keypad to make any edits necessary. If we press F1, we also get the menu. So we have Save, Save As, Discard Changes. We also get functions Undo, Redo, Cut, copy and paste. Search, we get find and replace text. Then modify, we can remove or add line numbers, reverse positive and negative sides, or reverse X and Y. Memory is the mode we go to when we want to run our program. When we have our program selected, we can select memory. Good idea to hit reset to make sure at the top, and then cycle start to run the program. Inside of memory, we get other options. Single block will let us execute each line of code with each press of the cycle start. Simply press single block to turn off. Graphics will pull up a 2D image for us for our program to run in. We simply press cycle start to run the graphics. Then we can use F2 to enable zoom and positioning inside the screen. Option stop will stop and pause the program anytime it sees an M01 in the program. This will allow you to open the door, check the part, check the tool, maybe clean some chips off, whatever you need to do. To turn it off, simply turn the icon off and then it will ignore all M1s and run continuous. Lock delete is used for when you want to skip certain sections or specific lines of code. Anytime you have a forward slash on the front side of the code or on the front side of the line, when block delete is active, it will ignore that entire line of code. When it's off, it will read the entire line just as it normally would. MDI stands for Manual Data Input. This is used for probing sequences or maybe short sequences of code that we just want to type in. We can also 
turn our coolant on and off simply by pressing coolant. Select handle scroll to allow us to use the handle jog wheel to scroll through programs or through menus. ATC forward and ATC reverse are used to, to manually change the tools. We can simply type T and then whatever our tool number was and maybe we want tool number one and then to ATC forward and the machine will execute a tool change to put that tool into the spindle. Handle jog we spoke about earlier. Zero return is used to manually home the axes or just for them to rapid traverse back to their home position. You can simply press zero return all, which would be very similar to pressing power up, which we discussed. Origin and single, we can send axes back to their, select a single axis and move it back to its home position. Home Jeep 28 will rapidly traverse the axis back to its home position. It's a good idea to use Home G28 throughout the day rather than resetting your home position every time you want to go home. List program is how we select the program we want to run. When we press list program, it'll pull up the memory screen and it'll show all the programs that are available in our machine currently. We can scroll down to the program that we're after and select hit select program and that will make our active program come up. If we wanted to run a different program, we could hit list program, select a different program, select program, then we could go to memory, and then continue to run from there. The left and right arrow buttons on the screen, I like to think of these as the forward and back buttons on my web browser. They simply take me backwards or forwards through the screens that I was just on. Race program can be used to delete an existing program. For example, if I wanted to delete this program, I can simply hit enter, get a check mark in the box, hit erase program, say yes, that's the one I confirm that's the one I want to delete, and the program's deleted. To load a program from a USB or network, we go to the list program, we can arrow up to the top of the list, we select USB or the network, and we go down and we find the file that we're after. This is the program I wanted. I simply can press F2 for copy, and then I select where I want to copy the file to. So I want to copy the memory, and then just inside of memory, I simply press enter, and it loads the program. Under the display section in the center portion of the control, we have program, position, offset, current commands, alarms, diagnostic, setting, and help. Program display is what automatically comes up when we set memory. This displays a, the program, a brief section of the active codes, active tool information, a current coolant level, override, feed rate, position, and a small timers and counter section. Overall, a good view gives you a lot of information. The position display has four different tabs. It shows our current position related to our work offset under program. Distance to go is active when we're running our program and it tells us how far we have to travel to complete the current motion. Machine position is the machine is the current state of where the machine is at from its home positions. Operator display is the same as a digital readout that many of you may be familiar from a manual machine. When you're in hand jog and on position, we can zero these axes much like a digital readout. The instructions are on the screen. We simply press the axis letter plus origin zero. So axis, I'll pick X, origin, and I can zero. You can also set it to a current position. Maybe you want to travel from where you're currently at a certain distance and not have to do the math. So we could say X 10.0 and then press enter and it stores that value in that position. It's a handy tool. All gives me all four displays on the screen at once. I like to use this display when I'm proving out a new program just because I can see all the information that I'm at.
The offset display takes us to the tool and work offset pages. When we press offset, we're currently on the tool offset page. So it sees all the active tool offsets. We see a note for spindle that tells us tool one is currently in the spindle. We can see our length, wear length, diameter, and diameter wear. By cursor to the right, we have a lot a indicator bar that shows us where we're at. There's quite a few pages to the right here. This is where we can set up the total number of flutes on our tool so that our chip load displays correctly, actual diameter, and a lot of the information that is required for probing. We'll get into this a little deeper, but it's all shown on the offset page. To get to the work offset, we can simply press F4 to use a shortcut or arrow up to the top, over, and back down to get to work. This shows our active work offsets, G54, etc., XYZ, and on this machine we have BNC available as well. The current commands tab has a lot of information behind it. When we press current commands, we have devices as the first option, mechanisms, we can manually orient the spindle or turn on the spindle brake on this one. Your machine may have other options available. Simply arrow up. We also have a timers page here. This is similar to what's available under the program screen with a little bit more information. This is also where we can set up a macro display. The macro variable tab will get us to the display where we can see all of our macros available. This is an option. Your machine may or may not have macros available. The Active Codes tab is a little bit more detailed version of what's available under the program screen. This shows us all the active information in our machine. ATM is used for automatic tool management. This is used for setting up redundant tooling in your machine. You can set up some logic where the machine will automatically tool change to a new tool once one has been expired. If your machine is equipped with a random tool changer, or a high-speed tool changer, you'll have a tool table in the machine in the control that lists what tool is in what pocket. We also have a calculator available under current commands. You can down arrow and use a standard, a milling speed and feed calculator, and then a tapping calculator also. The alarms display has a lot of information behind it. If we press alarms, we can see any active alarms that are on the machine. If my e-stop was active, I get the alarm number and a brief description. When no alarms are active, this display will remain empty. Messages are messages I can convey through the program to the machine operator. Alarm history keeps a log of all alarms in the machine. These are timestamped and dated, so if you can go back and search and see if you've had some consistent alarms, or it helps with troubleshooting. Alarm Viewer allows me to look up a description of any alarm number that I've seen on the machine, or if I just want to go and read what's available. I can down arrow and search through, or I can type in the alarm number and then use the F1 search function to find that alarm. Key History shows all the keystroke history available on the machine. This goes back several hundred keystrokes and they all are timestamp and dated. I like to use this in case I think I fat figured a number. I can simply go to this display and verify what I actually typed in. Under the diagnostics key, we get all the machine diagnostics. We get gauges to show all the current available gauges. System will give us our system information. It shows mach machine serial number, software revision, power on time, I.O. is our I.O. monitor for all the machine, Rocon, and keyboard I.O. as well. Maintenance tab shows our lube cycles. Many machines are going to be preset from Haas with the correct increment for the cycle times. We can force an axis or spindle lubrication by pressing F2 or F3. Coolant refill is a machine Haas option that automatically hooks the machine to water and a coolant supply to keep the, the coolant level topped off. 
Software update is a new feature that Haas is working on that will allow them to update the software remotely for machines that are on the network. Under the parameter tab, we have features. Here we can see what features are available for a machine and if they're purchased or available for a tryout. If your machine shows tryout time available, you can simply highlight the correct line item and use the enter key to turn the time on or off. We also have compensation. Then the activation tab is used when your machine has been purchased. This is a showroom machine. So this has a countdown timer. Once your machine has been paid for, you will get a permanent activation code that you'll come to this screen and enter. It will permanently unlock your machine. If we press the settings button, it will bring up all the machine settings available. We can scroll through those using the cursor and change any settings we need that we deem necessary. We also have a search function available. So if we have a setting that we're trying to find, we just don't remember the settings number, we can use the search function. If I was looking for something related to SSV, for example, I can type in SSV, use the F1 search function, machine will search and find all the settings related to SSV. Power up and over. Under the network tab, this is where I'm going to set up my wired or wireless network connections. NetShare is used to connect your machine to your internal network to access files. OS Connect is an app available for your mobile device that allows you to see the status of the machine. Remote Display will allow you to see the machine's the actual control display on your device away from the machine. The rotary tab for many of you will be where you'll set up a fourth or fifth axis rotary. User positions can be used to set specific settings related to positioning. Second home position for this particular UMC can be set to bring the spindle right to the door. Tool change mid position may be used if you have a tall fixture. You can set a tool change position that forces the spindle to go up and position the table a certain place in its environment to allow tool change. User travel limit can be used to set a travel limit for any particular axis. If I wanted to set one, I can go into the user travel and I physically jog the axis I want to limit its travel to the location that I want to limit its travel. And then I can hit F2 to store its current position and that will set a soft limit in the machine to not allow it to travel beyond that point. The alias codes tab is for creating your own custom MRG code. This is defined very thoroughly inside the menu. The help menu on your host control is very thorough. Simply press the help display button and it will bring up the help menu. You have a table of contents, MG code list, programming examples. Anything that's in the manual is already loaded on the control. One of the great features is the ability to use the F1 search function. If I, here again, am looking for something, I don't know where it is in the manual, I can use the search function to find it. I used an example of SSV earlier in settings. So if I search SSV and press F1 on the help menu, it's going to pull up a list of every place that SSV is discussed inside of the manual. I can simply highlight the section that I'm looking for, press enter, and it'll bring up the description. Cancel will back, up, back me back out to the main menu, and I can find what I'm looking for. With the sample programs, that are available. I can even copy straight out of the help menu, paste into my program, change the numbers to make it match my specific example, and save myself a lot of time. To use the spindle probe to set a work offset, I'm going to navigate first to the edit menu, up to the top, and over to VPS. This stands for Visual Programming System. I'm going to down arrow, highlight probing, right arrow, then I'm going to select work offsets. These are all the types of features that I can set my work offset from.
For this particular example, I'm going to use vice corner. Or right arrow. And then I'm going to use the instructions on the screen to step through each function. First line is asking me what work offset do I want to set. I'm going to say G59 for this example. Select 59, enter. Down arrow. It's going to ask which corner am I setting on the block. For this one, I'm going to set corner number one, my lower left hand corner. X and Y are both asking me what's the incremental distance from that corner? How far over do I want to step over? This currently set at a half an inch. I'm going to leave it with that setting. Z is how far from where I position my probe do I need to travel down to actually probe the surface. Icon here shows me where I need to position my probe to start the cycle. For this one, it shows me right over the corner that I'm trying to set. So I'm going to go to hand job. And jog the spindle directly over the corner that I'm trying to set. This isn't something I'm measuring or setting. I'm only eyeballing this strictly directly over the corner. So backing over my template, I have it positioned like the image. I have all my values set. So I simply press cycle start to run the cycle. This particular cycle sets Z off the top of the face. Then it sets X and Y work offsets. Once the cycle is done, I get a green light, show me it's done. If I go to my offset page, I can see the work offset that is set. To use the visual programming system to generate G code, I'm going to navigate first by hitting edit, arrow up to the top, over to VPS, down, select VPS, right arrow. These are all the options that are available for generating G code. For this example, we're going to do circle contour milling. Right arrow to enter the template. Then simply I'm going to use the prompts and fill in the blank. What work offset do I want to use? What tool number do I need to use? For this example, we're going to use tool number one. What diameter is the tool? 0.375. I need RPM. Feed rate of the tool. Simply turn the coolant on or off. Retract plane above the part. How deep is my finished feature? Where is the position of the feature? This particular one, it wants to know the diameter of the feature. So we'll say we're milling a two inch circle. It's going to ask me if it's internal or external. External feature. And I filled in all the blanks at this point. So to generate the code, I can press F4. It gives me a few options. I can insert this into my clipboard and paste it into an existing program and output to MDI, or you can create a brand new program. Let's create a brand new program. So I'm going to press number three. It's going to ask me where I want it. I just want it in the memory. And then it's going to ask me for a program number, a file name, and a file comment. Press enter. Now that program is created. If I go to list program, there's a program I just created and hit select program and I have my G code. 